start to put tension on my string drawback, I was like, okay, I'm it. It's him. You can look at the horns when he's dead. I'm, I'm in, you know, in the zone. Let the arrow go. It's perfect. Uh, so they lose their front drawers. Yeah, they start. Yeah, that's how you know. Went about five, ten more yards. He probably went twenty yards. He stepped down to try to get back up. I saw him pull up. We rushed for him here in Rod that night. We got like 156 and something like that. And then the next day we came up to 153 even. You're listening to the White Cat Outdoors podcast, bringing you to the table where we talk about the outdoors. You dumb. <laughs> What's That's going true. on, guys? Episode 60 of the White Whoa, Cat Outdoors big podcast. Big 6 Yeah, getting old. We are getting old. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going to go right into it and just throw it over to Nick and Tom and let them talk because they've got the, the details all hashed out and they got the information. So it's all on them. Yep. So me and Tom are going to talk a little bit of housekeeping here. We're going to break out the brooms and mops and clean it up around here, let you guys know what's going on. Um, so we've been talking amongst ourselves, and uh, we decided that we're going to do the first annual White Cat Turkey Scramble. Now, this is just your pretty much – a uh, turkey pull, like I'm sure you guys have all been in before, but with a white cat twist. Um, this isn't no chocolate twist or orange twist. This is a white cat twist. Um, what we're going to be doing here is it's going to be, you can either do it in teams or by yourself, but it's going to be, you know, one entry. Um, and basically, it's going to be 30 bucks. You guys can sign up in pairs or just by yourself, regardless, th- 30 bucks. Um, what it is is basically it's going to be opening day, which is May 1st for this year. New um, York and PA. Yeah, New York and PA. Um, and all it is is biggest bird turned in. Um, we're going to use Boone, Boone and Crockett. And, yeah, Boone and Crockett. Thank you, Tom. Um, and that, that's the winner. And But that 30 bucks, you're going to win a cash prize. Uh, it's undecided, obviously, because we don't know how many people are getting in. Um, but that 30 bucks is going to get everybody um, their meal ticket for – refreshments and burgers and dogs or whatever we decide to cook up that day uh opening day um there's going to be an after party starting about one o'clock um and go throughout the rest of the afternoon after hunting season or after opening day of turkey if you will but um so yeah come on out turn your birds in maybe win some money eat some good food drink some beer yeah birds have to be turned in in yeah. person by yeah. three i think we yeah decided. three o'clock so basically that that limits it to how far a way you can be this is more for our local guys um bird has to be turned in in person uh, by three o'clock so if you're within the area um and this is edinburgh area just to give you an idea crawford county pennsylvania yeah so if you're within an hour or two of here yeah no big you're listening deal. feel free to get in yeah it's gonna be a just good time make the or drive to i mean hell bird you could in. be six hours away but if you kill your bird early enough yeah come on over um, obviously, you have to be signed up before, you know, Friday night. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be a good time. If nothing else, even if you don't kill a bird, you still get some free beer and food and come hang out with us and tell us how your hunt went. So yeah. Maybe we could do a podcast right but, after with the winner. We could. I that just would, thought of that, and I think it's a good idea. That's a great Frank's idea. Frank's shooting from the hip, and I like it. Yeah. He it's it's a white cat way. It is. So we'll, uh, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that podcast or that topic later um as closer that's, to turkey season yeah um but, but we just gotta want, get the word out so just wanted to get that it's fresh happened. yep may 1st can't forget it, it's opening day of turkey season so yeah, turkey scramble yep white cat turkey scramble gotta gonna be, be signed up before though yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun so hopefully we uh see you guys there if you're listening and you want to get signed up shoot us a dm on the gram and yeah, uh, or we'll, facebook either way and we'll get you the deets yeah so that's open registration. So, mm-hmm. well, uh, like I said, we'll touch again on that here in about a month or so, and I'm sure we'll, we'll bring it up again between. Yeah, well, it'll be just to make sure everybody's remembering for sure. If you skip a week, we'll make sure you hear about it. Yeah. So, thank you, Frank. I think the floor is clean now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Um, and basically, all we're going to talk about today, uh, since there's quite a few rule changes going on that have been coming out the last couple weeks for mainly deer season is what we're going to be talking about for PA. So if you uh, 
If you're a listener from somewhere else, then it doesn't really pertain to you, but you can go ahead and listen and see what we got going on here in PA. In case you're, you know, if you're over in Illinois and you're traveling to PA for hunting season. Mm -hmm. um, Which a lot of people do. Yeah, we get that a lot. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) um, Coming over to this big buck state we have here. um, We get all kinds of, mostly Illinois and Iowa guys coming out this way. So those guys could benefit for sure. Absolutely. But so I guess we'll just uh, go down the list here. Um, I got the list here, so we'll just kind of do a little roundtable discussion about some different things that are to be expected in Pennsylvania this year. Um, and first up is Sunday hunting, um, which you know, as you know, we had three Sundays last year. Um, first time ever. Yeah, it, it was nice. I enjoyed it big time. I I only went out one of the Sundays because the other two were freaking horrific yeah. terrible wind and rain i think tom went out for all three of them yeah though. tom i think yeah i think he was out on principle yeah i think sure. i think so no i just <laughs> i tell you what that one hurricane we had i saw a lot of deer in a short window of time so basically the weather was awful windy raining snowing all around not good while i was on stand there was like 20 minutes where the sun came out and the wind died right down and i was like oh man this is going to be perfect and deer just started moving from everywhere mm-hmm. well then 20 minutes later skies got dark <laughs> hurricane again, again. And, yeah but in that 20 minutes action was hot so yeah i actually climbed down out of my tree stand because i didn't feel safe being in a tree <laughs> i seen a giant branch fall and i was like you know if that would have hit me in the head i'd probably be done so yeah better I'm, head out i'm of gonna the even though it's Sunday, tree. Yeah. even though it's our first Sunday hunting, better better tap out. Well, I didn't tap out. I just tapped yeah, you, out of my tree stand. Yeah, you, I hunted from the ground, which... So the tree can't hit you in the head when you're on the ground? I was yeah. The tree I was in was half dead. I was mostly afraid of that thing falling <laughs> over. Um, so the big change that's coming this year with Sunday hunting, um, or at least that this is all proposed, yeah. um, just as a disclaimer... Um, but last year the Sunday hunting was only open for bear and deer. Um, Mm -hmm. but there was other small game, um, that was in season at that time, um, like squirrels and fox, and you were not allowed to kill those on Sundays. This year they're proposing to allow no extra Sundays, but on those Sundays you can hunt everything that's in season. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, I don't, I feel like everybody should get to take advantage of it. If you're not a deer hunter, but you hunt squirrels like our buddy let fly, yeah. He hunts deer too. He kills bucks all the time. Yeah. But he's big time squirrel hunter. Yeah. Why shouldn't he be able to take advantage of these Sunday hunting? So yeah, I hope exactly. that this gets passed through. Um, I don't know if Tom, have any opinions on that? I think it's just time to open up Sunday yeah, hunting in general. It's well I'm, past due. I, I agree. feel the same way. Just the deer, it's deer season or whatever season doesn't matter. Let's hunt on Sundays. Every almost every other. I don't. I can't even think of a state that doesn't hunt on Sundays. But we're one. And it's it, dumb. Yeah, it's time to just open the floodgates and let us hunt on Sundays. Yeah, I don't understand the point of like tiptoeing our way mm-hmm. into it. It's not like we're jumping into a pool of cold water where you have to ease your way in. Like, yeah, it's not like shooting up heroin where yeah. you got to ease into it. Yeah, <laughs> build up a tolerance. <laughs> yeah, just go all out. Yeah. So, moving past uh, <laughs> the two main arguments I see are um, that I'm going to debunk both of them right now. Um, yeah, they're both dumb. First one is give the animals a day of rest. Most people are not getting to hunt a full day during the week. They have plenty of time to rest in, mm-hmm. in most of the year, actually. Yeah. Um, and so I, I don't even understand. I think that comes from non-hunters that don't understand what's going on. Yeah, the majority um, of people are at work yeah. during the week and don't get to hunt. Exactly. If you work until 5 o'clock, you don't get to hunt. Yeah. And then the second one is people want their time, um, like – you know, like granola eating trail hikers to, (laughs) they want their time in the woods. Well, they have the rest of the year and they don't buy a hunting license that provides these state game lands anyway. Yeah. So they shouldn't really have a say in it. I personally believe that there should be trail permits. Yeah. If Um, you don't have a hunting license, you should have to buy a stamp. Yeah. Personally. Because you're not paying to use that land, but you want to have a say in what goes on in that land. It's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. So if you want to dictate what goes on there, Either buy a hunting license or, like you said, have some sort of trail permit and yeah. walk your dog the other nine months out of the year. Stay exactly. out of there in the wintertime when people want to be archery and rifle hunting. And if you can't 
live without walking your trails, just make sure you're wearing an orange vest and put an orange vest on your dog. Yeah. There you go. So. And shut the hell up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next topic is shooting all the dough unlimited. I, uh, that, that, that's misleading. <laughs> it's unlimited every, dough tags. Yeah, and nobody's reading into it. No, and, every article you see like come up on Facebook, it's like, oh, PA is doing unlimited dough tags, and that's not even a little yeah. bit what's going on. It kind of, to an extent, but what yeah. it, it's unlimited to the user while the tags are available. And yeah. the way I'll break that down for you is – each WMU in Pennsylvania has an allotted amount of doe tags. And every year, you can only have, I think, three. I think three is the max. Three num- is the max. Yeah. Um, that's a technicality. But that's as many as you can get per person. And even every, if there's still tags left. Even if there's tags left. And what was happening was is there's a lot of tags going unfilled, which means we're getting a lot of doe that should be killed that aren't getting killed. And yeah, and popul- that's the reason why they pick yeah. the number of tags to issue is because they say, okay, we have this many deer. So we need this many killed to keep the population where we want it. So here's the number of tags. If no one's buying those tags, they're not meeting the quotas that they want for, you know, that population that they want to aim for. Exactly. So places like 1B where we're at likely won't see any change because we sell out every year. But when you get down into like the suburban areas where there's always unfilled or unpurchased tags, I think you're not going to be allowed to have any more than three or four in possession. So it's not like you can go and buy 20 tags. Yeah. But... As long as they're for sale, you can continue to go back and buy more, mm-hmm. which I'm totally for. Hit the quota, you know. If yeah. somebody, if some like, and it's not that like people are just shooting these deer and letting them lay in the fields. A lot of times they're mm-hmm. getting donated um, to. There's programs all over Pennsylvania. Yeah, and to donate your deer eat themselves or eat themselves. Yeah, we. I mean, between me, Tom, and my dad, we had four deer put in the freezer this year, and I guarantee all of those are going to be gone by midsummer. Yeah, like just the way it works. Yeah, so. So yeah, it's definitely misleading when people are saying unlimited doe tags because it's not at all unlimited because the quota number isn't changing. It's just individuals are no longer limited to three as long as there's tags available. Okay, you can keep buying them after you shoot your doe. You're not done. We still need these deer killed, so yeah. keep buying the tags until we're out of tags. And it generates more money for the state. Mm-hmm. Um, do we need to still apply for? Yes, our you're still going to apply. Yeah. It is still going to be applied for your first one and your bonus. There, like, there's going to be like the bonus rounds, but after that, I believe they're proposing for them to be over the counter. Once everybody, like, they do like their second and third round of bonus tags. After that, like in season, you'll be able to go over the counter and buy more tags. It'd be just like buying a hunting license. Mid-season. I don't understand Basically. why they wouldn't just start it over the counter, like like every other orders. state. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm hoping they get to that eventually. But like, again, these are all proposed. Nothing is set in stone for the 2021 season yet. Mm-hmm. Um, well, maybe they'll listen to our podcast and be like, you know what? Those those guys have some good ideas. Yeah, That's we're, what we're doing. I can't believe that we're still out. like, well, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. We're not allowed to hunt on Sundays. You have to apply through the mail for your doe permits. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like most you can't states, even do it online. You walk up and you either buy them straight over the counter or they like click two buttons and they're like, okay, tags available. Here you go. Like yeah. you still have to apply technically, but it's an application that's done that's in how two New York seconds. Is. Yeah, as soon as you apply, you get it right back, and it's done. Yeah, yes or no? Yeah, PA just wants that check sent in the mail. Yeah. yeah. Um, next uh, topic of discussion is e licenses, and this is another advancement in our generation and stuff. For years up up until now, you always had to keep your physical license on you, um, visible. It and doesn't have to be visible anymore. You oh, yeah, so they wallet. switched. Okay, so they that switched it out. was a few years ago they changed um, that. But now they're proposing to have e-licenses. So basically you can have an electronic copy uh, on your phone um, so you no longer have to worry about your paper tag or reprinting tags. I, I know somebody that, like, loses their tags quite often, um, right, usually right before they need them, like yeah. going on a hunt, and then I spend an extra half hour looking for my tags i was just i think you gave away who yeah. the person was well, it's me <laughs> it's me um so having the ability to just have it like a downloadable copy on my phone would be really really nice well, how do you tag the animal you still need to have your physical tags this is your hunting license yeah but your tags are attached to your license <laughs> not if you buy them separate <laughs> well as soon as you t- as soon as okay spring turkey comes up actually it would be like fall like archery season. As soon as you rip your tag once, now your license could be removed from your tags. If you misplace it, you would be able to have a digital copy. And so instead of paying the 
eight dollars or whatever it is or panicking you still have to be able to tag the animal but your license is like an e-license uh, I don't think it hurts anything. No, it doesn't hurt anything. I just think it's dumb. Yeah, I think it would be... But I think there's bigger issues that they could be trying to work out than... Yeah, than e-licenses. But I, the only like spot I see it being an advantage is, say you're walking through the woods and you get stopped by a game warden, say, while you're in the woods, haven't killed anything, you don't have to tag something, but they're like, all right, you know, let me see your license. And you're like, oh, shit. I must have dropped it somewhere walking in or out of the woods, whatever. And then you can just say, well, here's my phone. You know, I got I got my e-license right here. So in that situation, I would see where it would come in handy. But like Tom said, if you're tagging an animal, odds are you got your license right there too because they're attached. Yeah. But like there's situations for everything. And yeah. like when we went up to Canada, I just had my fishing license on my phone. But again, I don't have to tag yeah, every fish. fish. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, but for a small game hunter, a predator hunter, mm-hmm. something. Not everybody yeah. that is out hunting hunts deer and turkey that need to be tagged. Yeah, exactly. So if you think about it in the essence of a, a guy. A broader that, spectrum. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not just about you, Tom. Yeah. Well, I guess my other issue is in the cold weather, my phone dies in about 20 minutes. Yeah, same so. here. It's well, bad. pull out your Kindle and put it on that. <laughs> yeah, because I do like to read when I'm on stand. <laughs> pull so, out a good book. Just nestle up into a good book in your Summit Viper. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just uh, get lost up there. Uh, next, which I'm actually interested to talk to Tom about because I'm sure he's unaware of this. Um, I'm sure he's got plenty to say. Yeah. So as we have all discussed prior, the turkey population has seems to be on a bit of a decline, maybe starting to come back, but definitely, seems, definitely, definitely, back. Coming back. definitely. definitely seems to be declined from years prior. Yes. Um, so there are proposed changes um, in separate WMUs where it's, more great to reduce the season um tag allocations and in certain wmu's closing turkey season altogether really one b is not one of them 5a is i, don't I know. didn't know that 5a they're looking at closing the season completely not this coming spring turkey like yeah, this is next so 2022 um and again it's proposed it may or may not happen yeah but basically a reduced turkey season to help stimulate the uh, population that is definitely down from what I would say was 10 years ago. So, I don't know, Tom, if you're in agreement with that or... I, I don't know if I'm in agreement with it. I think it's not the hunters that caused the downfall of the turkey population. We had several very harsh, cold winters in a row. This is a, It's a temporary, that. like, right. to help bring it back. Not saying... They're not saying that the reason it's down is because of hunters. They're saying we're trying to let the population grow back up, so let's not kill as many this year. But I don't think you're killing enough. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I, okay, I got where you're coming from now. Yeah, I think that's more what he's saying. Like, Even if you stop hunting for a year or two, the number of birds that are getting killed every year aren't going to be enough to make up for... Cause I wonder, we'd have to look... Because when my dad was a kid, there was actually... A, they, they closed deer season at one point. Mm-hmm. I wonder how much well, that when happened. dad was a kid. That was back like when grandpa was a kid. Oh. A back when Same before thing. I was hunting. Back when tigers used to smoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those camels. No. No. Saying's definitely tigers. Well, camels used to smoke too. Like you're thinking of the cigarette camels. Yep. Anyway, yeah, it was I think the big thing was we kinda got like double, triple whammied with super cold harsh winners no i don't think that was it It yeah because it was like 2013 14 and 14 15 those two winners we had like weeks straight of negative 20 degree air temperatures not wind chill and those two years in a row i think really hurt the population and then like you said we got we got followed up those harsh winters with super wet springs yeah which and then i don't know there's theories on fishers being introduced to the area i don't know if the game commission reintroduced them into the area or if the population's just been growing but there is definitely an increased number of fishers Mm -hmm. and predators in general i think you don't have the amount of people trapping anymore Mm -hmm. um due to you know hides aren't worth nearly what they used to be so nobody's wasting their time trapping 
So fishers, raccoons, possums, fox, coyotes. Stuff that eats eggs. Yeah, everything turkeys. has been going through the roof. So obviously, you know, all of those predators eat poults. They eat the eggs. They eat the turkeys, the full-grown turkeys. Like, it's. I think if you really want to help the turkey population, you knock down the actual turkey predators. Yeah. I think compared to the fox the coyotes and the fishers hunters take not even a fraction of what they take yeah yeah because one fisher will go in and destroy an entire nest of a dozen eggs yeah so yeah so right there you lost 12 turkeys as opposed to you going out and shooting one a year yeah if you even shoot one yeah i haven't got a turkey in quite a few years especially Mm -hmm. in pa pa since i was i haven't got a turkey since i was I don't know, 15. Not that I couldn't have got turkeys. I mm-hmm. may have missed one or two, but <laughs> I passed up a lot of birds. Yeah. I don't pass turkeys. Yeah, but I think the main thing it boils down to is the first thing you brought up, the couple hard winters we had and the wet springs. Because that was right around the time we saw it. It was like immediately it took it a like nosedive. One dive. year. Yeah, they took a big nosedive. And they've been beak slowly, dive. yeah, a beak dive, if you will, um, swan dive. Isn't it? Well, it doesn't really line up, but either way, it's a bird. Um, it's a plane. <laughs> but that's like when we saw the big decline was like after 2013, 14, and 14, 15. And they've been kind of coming back since then slowly. And this year, I think, is even, you know, we've just started this year, but I've seen a lot of birds so far this year i see 20 out in our field every day which yeah. i haven't seen that dad in a long and i time. saw yeah, it's been every day, day. they like it, they're definitely coming back so i think they might be just in our area at least they might be a little late to the party with <laughs> the suggesting of well one bee's not part of it okay yeah so it, like i said in our area but i don't know what about the rest of the state so they could be yeah. right on par I think if you want to increase the turkey population, you put a bounty on predators. Mm -hmm. I agree. Get people out there hunting coyotes, fox, trapping raccoons. And, like, Fisher is only take one a year. And they don't have as long. It's not like when trapping season opens, like, there's long seasons for beavers and raccoons and stuff. They have a really long season. It's a couple months long. For fishers, it's not very long. Very short, yeah. So... I think if you extend those seasons and let people kill a couple of them, then... What is the reason for such a short season? If you're only allowed one... Because there's not... They, I, I don't know if they... Well, if when they, they introduced them. the season, it was because there wasn't very many. That we're yeah, still but, working but off of... But if there's of, not like, many, the, like, why... And it's only one... Why not just make it as long as the rest of the trapping season, but you can only get one? I guess because they're still getting money on the tag, and they're... Since it's such a short season, less people are less gonna people get it. are going to be successful during that season. But they still get their but money. But you can out still kill one if you catch it accidentally. No, legally you have to contact game commission. Yeah. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they can let it go for you. No, when well, you're even trapping, if, like, if, you if legally you ca- have to have a release tool. Mm-hmm. Or if you catch it in a trap, like a conibear. If no, if you catch it in a conibear and it's dead, you have to turn it into the game commission you know, yeah but that's what i'm saying like that's what i'm getting at if you catch an econa bear like it you why not just make it the entire season with everything else mm-hmm. and just you're allotted one because if you check catch an econa bear like you could potentially on accident catch 15 of them yeah because you catch them basically the same way you catch a raccoon yeah and if somebody's using econa bears mm-hmm. it sucks to suck but I, I don't know it just it seems like you're just asking for more problems yeah. If it's one per year, just like deer, one per year, like one buck per year. Well, just why make... don't we get to hunt deer all year round? Well, that has something to do with <laughs> um, like the breeding yeah. seasons and everything and the yeah. antler growth seasons. But I guess I could be, um, what's the the word? Um, wrong? No, not wrong. <laughs> uh, what's ignorant to yeah. like breeding seasons for yeah, fisher and no stuff. Idea. So like that's something that could be in effect. I know skunks breed in the springtime. I don't know if that's all animals of that sort of nature. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, I know coyotes. You, do you are in witness the a lot of I know some people action. with pet ferrets. I'll ask them. Oh, they're pretty similar. 
But no, you know, ever notice? Jet black, not a coon. Not a coon. In the springtime, you always see dead skunks on the road. Yeah. Yeah, it's because they're out running about. It's like the the skunk rut. Exactly. You know, you always see more. <laughs> Same dead. with beavers. You always see beavers in the springtime on the road. Could be a yeah. coincidence. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. See, I definitely think that would be a better approach is to do something about predators rather than hunters. Yeah, I think I think that's a good valid point because predators are on the rise. Mm-hmm. This is true. I think it's just easier for them to say, okay, less less hunting. Yeah, yeah. It's easier to take away from you. Because the hunting numbers are dropping already. Yeah. So it's harder to get more people to kill more things. Yeah, it's easier to get you to kill away. less. Yeah. But whether or not that's more effective, I suppose. It's up to the biologists. Yeah. But I tell you, if I was getting 20 bucks for a raccoon like I was back in the day. We'd still be hunting them. I'd, yeah, I'd still be trapping mm. raccoons. Yeah. But I got one last year, and I got two bucks for it. I'm like, I'm not. it's not worth my time. Mm-hmm. You paid more than that just to take it out to old John Chase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh, the last big topic, which we touched on a little bit before we hit record, so I know where Tom sits with this one. Um and Frank a little bit, but um, bringing uh, Antlerless back to opening day and that first Sunday now. So mm-hmm. Saturday and Sunday after Thanksgiving, you'll be able to kill bucks and does. Where last year they moved it to where it was buck only that first two days. I think it was last year and the year before. Yeah, so now opening day, Brown, she's down, baby. I think the only thing that's going to do is increase the number of bucks being killed. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely have noticed that when doe season is allowed, you can you, more bucks get killed because more people are shooting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what I said earlier. Like, it seemed like the first day of deer season, since it was just buck the last two years, fewer people went out. So it was like you had the opening day and you had an influx of hunters. And then Saturday, when the when doe came in, or was it? Mo- I don't remember. It was, it was Saturday. Saturday. Oh, it was a Saturday. When does it, came in, you had another big It felt influx. like opening day. Yeah, exactly. It felt like you had two opening days. But I also think that the first opening day wasn't near as big. And you had that whole first week where there were fewer hunters in the woods. People weren't chasing does around. There was fewer shots being fired to move deer around. And I really feel like a lot more bucks made it, in my opinion. Which from what the I've archer seen. in me is happy about that. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's how I feel. But I'm also not against it being doe no. on the opening day. I, I'm all for it being doe open day since, because by the I'm big into like archery hunting. I mm-hmm. am way more passionate about that than rifle. Um, by the time I break my rifle out for hunting season, I'm no longer like as serious about it. It's more of the tradition yeah. behind it, and I'm happy to shoot a doe opening day. Yeah, No problem. I'm ready for the heart and tenderloins mm-hmm. at that point. Yeah, and like... My, pretty much our whole lives since we started hunting up until two years ago you've been allowed to shoot does the whole season as soon as deer season opened you could shoot buck or doe the whole time so it's not like it's something new to us so that's maybe that's why i feel like it doesn't really matter to me as much but like you yeah. said from an archery standpoint it's like i don't really less care bucks they get killed in gun season means hopefully more bucks for me next year yeah exactly but i mean at the same time there's all there's a big block big yeah. buck in every block it yeah. seems you know it's like every big buck in our block's been hit by a truck <laughs> so yeah so we're not worried about yeah, hunters yeah side note here me and tom um actually my dad bought a new piece of property this past season uh this was the first full season we had it um and I'll tell you what we've really struggled we've had three really solid bucks three pope and young class bucks yeah taken two by vehicle one by poacher <laughs> it, it's been a it's, rough year. It sucks because, you know, you put all this time into the property and, you know, they, it sucks. That's yeah, all I can say about like, it. Cause like what we're talking about right now, we're worried about it. Not worried, worried about, about it in rifle season. Other people yeah. shooting the deer, you know, how many deer getting killed during rifle and archery. But yeah, Karen just, in a soccer mom van. Exactly. You know, worry about her with her deer whistles on the front. Yeah. No, it wasn't Karen that hit it. but Could have been Karen. Could have been a Karen probably was kidding. just it sucks yeah <laughs> but mm-hmm. what do you do it'd be like that sometimes yeah. they'll be back yeah they always come not back. those ones those ones won't <laughs> others yeah hopefully yeah. yeah one can only help we'll be uh 
be out looking for their sheds soon. Not those ones, of course. Yeah. And I, um, my dad found a dead, my, my dad's buddy found a deadhead while they were out coyote hunting. So oh, yeah. there's been all kinds of nice big bucks getting killed yeah. after the season that ones that you think make it through and then all of a sudden you're like shit yeah that does suck yeah and people that are out there looking for sheds make sure you guys are putting them back after you take your pictures so they can pick them back up next year yeah this is true keep growing yeah let them grow yeah you don't want them to have to start over so <laughs> but yeah that's I think, that's yeah. you say that's actually that was about besides the uh leaving your sheds there um that, that's all the big changes for pa um proposed changes for next season of course that means you know next archery season and the following turkey season nothing's changing to turkey season we got coming up here yeah. soon um but yeah it's i'm i'm open to it and stuff i'm not like our older generation that hates change and stuff i mm-hmm. i put a lot of faith in the scientists that come up with the seasons yeah. and the studies they do a lot more studying than i do it's the insurance companies the insurance companies has a lot to do with deer season and stuff i i agree um, mm-hmm. And I think that's who's pushing for the doe tags because mm-hmm. just the They're amount tired of, of paying the claims. Yeah. So I, I agree to that point, but I think there's a lot of studying in science that goes on in the game commission. And I, I think they're doing a really good job. I've never had any issues with game wardens. In no, PA. me either. Actually, I've never had issues in any state that I've been mm-hmm. in, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so, uh, Keep tuning in for updates on the uh, White Cat Turkey Scramble. And start getting signed up now. No yeah, time you, like the present. Yeah, literally right now. Sunday morning when you're tuning in, like, hit Send us up. Send us your money. Yeah, give us all your monies. So. Oh, how, speaking of that, before we sign this off, how are we? Are people only paying in person, or how do you want to uh, well, do We payment? could do um, Venmo, PayPal, okay. or in person. Yeah. Um, that's one of the if you're we'll talk about it when you hit us up yeah that, exactly it's it's yeah. one of those it's very simple um yeah. if you're we'll local we'll tell you how to pay yeah if we're local to the area or like and you want to pay in person that's fine um if you're a little bit out or if it's just more convenient because you don't carry cash to venmo that's fine too well like i said we'll iron those details you out want to mail in a check we, yeah we could mail in checks um but we'll yeah. iron those details out when the shirt comes out of the dryer you know what i'm saying Makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, make sure you guys are all getting outside.